good evening to everybody welcome to the mind sparkle series every week we host a eminent personality from the respective fields and from the different sectors of professional careers those people who have carved a niche for themselves in their sector those who are role models for the upcoming professionals students and those who want to succeed in their life we call upon these role models to talk about the ideas their journey their thoughts and their future plans how they did it and what are the things that they missed what are the things they would like to do it in future so whole lot of things we discuss with them so that a clear perspective is emerging from those kind of discussions for the benefit of the audience today we have a very big personality from the field of data science in fact you will hardly come across people this is a new science which is emerging in india and i'm very happy to host dr sethi he is a clinician data scientist the best thing is that this is a term which i am hearing also for the very first time and many of us would be hearing for the first time but i can assure you in future this term would be on the lips of everybody because this sector is going to solve the pressing problems of healthcare and the pandemic and the associated related problems that will emerge from this healthcare issues so dr sethi is full name is dr tap tap prestesh sethi he is a medical doctor by profession the big thing is that he did his phd also in genomics and integrative biology and that is a wow factor in his uh, uh, qualifications in fact a very very imp impressive personality having mbbs and phd and he did not stop there he is a visiting faculty of stanford university biomedical data science department that shows that he is in touch with the current development in the world in the field of data science it means that he has a pulse of the changes that is happening in the data science all over the world especially with related to healthcare sector then also he is a fellow of national academy of science usa that is a very prestigious organization being a fellow means that he is abreast in his knowledge he is a leader in his field and his thoughts and ideas are well appreciated worldwide plus he is a fellow of dbt alliance welcome group from all india institute of medical science under their like association so a big kind of association he is having in his professional field so that not a single development in this field of data science healthcare medical biomedical is missed by him that is, speaks volume about his professional knowledge in fact i would be having a interesting session today and it be an eye opener for all of you to learn the important things that is happening in this healthcare sector today the topic is entrepreneurial journey in fact when i was discussing with dr sethi he says that from a doctor he has become a clinician data scientist and he is giving solutions to the uh, healthcare sector through his artificial intelligence big data analytics and machine learning the combination of all this solves our day to day problem so we will be asking and requesting dr sethi to begin his a speech on the entrepreneurial journey from being a doctor to providing solutions to the doctors and healthcare field in the from the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning dr sethi without wasting any time you would love we would love to hear you on this issue dr sethi the platform is yours thank you so much uh, thank you so much mr shanwas kasim i think this is uh, indeed my pleasure to be to be speaking with uh, to this audience young people who are in their journeys to choose their careers and maybe sometimes we all are confused about uh, taking the next steps and i hope i will be able to convey uh, some positive note and some enthusiasm that everybody uh, goes through this phase and hopefully they emerge uh, to be leaders in their uh, field whatever they choose to be so i'll just start sharing my screen so that my presentation becomes visible uh, just give me a second so i hope my screen is visible now it's visible dr sethi please go ahead right all right so i think it's uh, it's moving in the full screen mode so i'll take this time to just introduce uh, what 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 my career trajectory has been uh, like so basically i'm going to talk about from being a doctor to building artificial intelligence for doctors and i call this an entrepreneurial journey and i hope i will be able to convince you uh, by the end why i call that so 
but but on the way i think many of uh, uh, the young people will, will recognize very much that there are similarities when you try to create uh, some new um, some new disciplines and break some of the boundaries it is by itself an entrepreneurial journey so uh, i would like to start with something which actually motivated motivated me for a long time so human bodies are complex systems we are very complex biological systems so what do we mean by a complex system let me start by giving you an example so i have a video here which is a video of birds called starling birds and these are flying together in a coordinated fashion and you can see that the patterns are emerging as they are flying you can see that there is no leader here right still they are making such complex formations and creating these patterns as an organized system who is telling her to do this stuff right so this is a very quintessential example of how our bodies also work so if you think about it our bodies also work in the same way our brains also work like this there are thousands of neurons which trigger uh, sensations in our bodies in a very coordinated fashion there is no one single neuron that is uh, that is leading anybody it is a coordinated system it is a connected system so within our bodies we are connected our organs are connected our functions are connected our genes are connected our genes also work in a very connected fashion so what you are seeing right here is called a murmuration of birds and what i'm saying is that our bodies also behave like a murmuration so when our bodies work like a murmuration and these complex systems that we are what we started to realize that we have to invent a new kind of science a new kind of science which actually goes beyond just one domain it goes beyond one domain speciality so for example on the left hand side you will see a classic field a classic field is like a t shaped uh, let it be a research field or let it be a profession a classic profession is like a t shaped profession that a person becomes very specialized in a domain whereas what now what is emerging is something like a pie shaped field where with, with domain speciality we need another speciality and more and peep more people are taking on to being pie shaped specialized people in which they combine their domain for example medicine healthcare with another domain which may be for example in my case has been stats and computing in your case it might be something else right it might be something totally uh, different that you can combine with your field and i want to make this case that more and more people who will be like this pie shape professionals which will combine two or more disciplines in great depth will become very common in future and we will see that these are the kind of people and i am i am actually motivated uh, by by stalwarts uh, of such people who have actually bro broken the boundaries across disciplines i am a very small example people who have been uh, breaking across boundaries uh, have been really motivating factors for me so i would like to say that when you are starting out in your careers many a times we start thinking very narrow we start thinking let us become an engineer or let us become a doctor or let us take to some profession very but but if you expand your horizons you will see examples that you will take to who people who have actually broken these boundaries and have created some of these uh, 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 some of these new disciplines right so think about entrepreneurs like elon musk or even think of entrepreneurs in our own country i mean so go back think of mahatma gandhi so 
think about how such such a simple movement created such a big change uh, in the country that itself is also entrepreneurial right and we have our own examples in the country about entrepreneurs who are creating something new but today i will talk about in the time that we have about my journey and that i hope will inspire some of you in taking up a journey which is a mix of uh, a couple of professions and you do, and you should not be afraid of uh, breaking some of those bounds so when we started about when i started about uh, uh, my journey in healthcare i realized that i need to be start i need to start looking at mathematics also if i want to solve some of these challenges in health because as 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 we as we as we saw that the system such as those murmurations of birds or systems for example our hearts system such as our genes the, the way they work they have very very um, they have fundamental mathematical principles that we need to understand and without understanding those it is difficult to really solve some of those problems so that is where basically this is an example where um, on the right hand side we might have something like the heart rate the way our bodies behave and on the left hand side if we actually understood that system correctly our heart rate is also uh, is also an organized system just like a murmuration why ai is important in 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 healthcare in the current field uh, in in the current days so I, I would like to give an example here that before the WHO raised a warning about the spread of COVID, which has affected all of us. I mean, you have been affected, we have been affected, our education system has been affected, professions have been affected. There was one company called uh, uh, Blue Dot, which is based in uh, uh, Canada. Kamran Khan is the name of the founder. So that company actually raised alerts about the spread of this COVID. Ten days before CDC from the U.S., which is uh, the Center for Disease Control in the U.S., a very uh, a premier organization which 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 tells about the disease spread. Ten days before CDC alerted, this uh, company actually raised alerts. And uh, uh, ten days before WHO uh, raised alerts about this they were able to raise raise alerts that something is coming we need to be on our toes how did they do it they used ai coupled with a lot of data so data science i mean so this was traditional as well as non traditional data for example what are people talking on social media right that is an example of social media data what are flights being taken and what is happening in those flights what are people those that took those flights talking about so these are non conventional data sources that uh, that the company blue dot leveraged to raise these warnings so they used ai so and incidentally um, as i said dr kamran khan is actually a clinician he he is a clinician and he is a data scientist so so when mr kasim said that uh, um, i i think i'm inspired by such figures uh, as dr kamran khan who is a clinician data scientist and over the last 15 years their uh, initiative has been demonstrating again and again they have been publishing great research in top tier journals like lancet and creating solutions uh, uh, which which uh, uh, which have been for example in this case have been could have been revolutionary for the world now imagine uh, more such solutions being uh, delivered in in the world where we get some of the alerts about epidemics right we could have a different response system our governments could respond differently instead of 7 days or 10 days if we could actually somehow have one month by looking at some genomic data or maybe 6 months and if you were doing that you could change the face of the pandemic on earth we would not be in a similar situation like this 
So I started coding because with mathematics, there's a lot of coding uh, that is required. And I found it very interesting. I mean, we started creating our own software. We started creating our own mathematical tools, which would help us to understand our, um, our human systems in a way. We also provide AI solutions to make projections, to predict how much are the numbers going to be, for example, in Delhi. Can we help um, the Delhi state to be more prepared? Or for example, other states to be more prepared with, uh, with the numbers. So we do this by building population scale, AI models, for example, build, building simulations. Just as we have people walking, talking under lockdown, being tested, we can actually create such, such forms of simulations, right? And these simulations of something called agents, agent-based models, can then infect other people. And then we can know how can the infections rate look like. And we are very proud to say that our projections have been some have been one of the most uh, uh, correct projections for the reported rates, as well as if we think that if the reported rates are low, and if we and if the real numbers are let's say 50 times or 100 times, those sort of projections are also making their way on our dashboard. And we have these dashboards publicly available. The link is down below. And uh, implement a different form of testing strategy, right? So, so those are the kind of things that we, were, we are able to use AI for in the current pandemic scenario. <laughs> so I think our journey began in 2013 or so when we were asked about a question and I have another video to play here. When we were asked about a question that can AI help some of the healthcare challenges that India faces. So here, what you see each node is a disease. And this was data collected on two lakh patients who were visiting the OPDs of doctors on a single day. This wasn't our data. I was doing my PhD back then with the CSI IGIB. And we were collaborating with the Institute called Chest Research Foundation, Pune. So they collected this data. And when this data came to me, um, I thought that, can I use AI to, just as you remember those murmurations, those connected systems, to actually connect these different diseases together to understand what can influence what and what decisions can we take on the basis of that. So let me play this video. I hope it works. So let me just pause here in the interest of time. So what we found was that our AI models or basically our network models were able to capture the links of the connected system that our, that our bodies are in the patient data of two lakh patients who visited uh, these clinics on a single day. It was a huge initiative. It took a lot of time to analyze, to, uh, to organize this data, but, but the results were very encouraging. And we can see that uh, we were able to see that how different systems of our body got connected through data, just as that murmuration that we saw. Sorry. And then we were able to derive some insights that could be important for the policymaker. Not it was not only that it was published in a very high impact uh, uh, venue. Lancet Global Health is a journal uh, which is a very respected uh, place. We were able to derive insights, for example, on the x-axis here, we are having age groups of people. So, and the thicker the, the line here, the thicker the streamline here, the more important is that disease in the Indian population. So this blue line shows that 
most of the people, many, a large proportion of the people, a thick line shows that large proportion goes to clinicians for respiratory, khasi, nazla, zukam, right, cough, pneumonia, those kind of complaints. That is why the line is so thick. Now look at the red line. The red line becomes thicker and becomes more important as we are looking at the aged, aging population. Older populations which are here tend to have thicker red line and that combines together with this violet line which is endocrine. So our data showed us that heart disease and diabetes, they actually became one in, in, in this. So you can see this, this has become merged together in that connected system. So heart disease and diabetes actually became one strong component in the, in, in the, uh, in, in, in the aging population of India. Similarly, if we look at female genital complaints, female genital complaints are unimportant here. They become important, they become thick, they combine with anemia, they stay together and then they separate out after the reproductive age group. Anemia in the reproductive age group in females is such a big problem in India, right? The, uh, the anemia due to menstrual disturbances, iron uh, deficiency, our data showed in a very transparent way that these things happen together and when they think when these things spread out, move away. We were able to then build AI models that can help decisions. For example, the network on the right was able to show that if we were able to provide more clean cooking fuel in, 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 the, in the districts, the rate of obstructive pulmonary disease, which is respiratory disease, uh, will fall down by half. That is because a large proportion of our populations are actually burning chulas, right, in the villages, where 80% of the population stays. So our AI models were able to show that in a very transparent way. So we build more models. We, we, I mean, so our research was uh, featured on MIT uh, TR35 Innovators Under India, where we build mathematical models. Then I moved to AIMS after doing my PhD, where we started building models for ICUs. But can we start building models for predicting which children or babies in the ICU may or are at a higher risk, may, may crash? in the next 24 hours. So we did that, we wrote our own software again. And then we were able to publish this. We were able to build our own pipelines, which look at the data. And we were the first ICU in India, which has now uh, a big data ICU at Ames, in the Department of Pediatrics. Uh, the Department of Pediatrics, um, uh, so the ICU chief is Professor Rakesh Lodha, without whose um, uh, basically, uh, collaboration, this would not have been possible. So, but, but we were able to create this initiative. Now we, are, now we have 1 million patient hours of continuous data. For example, every heartbeat, every pulse rate, uh, every intervention uh, is, is recorded in that ICU uh, in a real time fashion. And now we are able to deliver some of these decisions. We delivered models, we are building models that now can see that if I learn model from a very different ICU, for example, from US, can I apply that model to India? Because that is important for an AI model to be important, that I should be able to take my model from one hospital and maybe use it in some other hospital. So that's my lab. Nothing is possible without a very strong team. So I have students and I have mentors, right? So Professor Rakesh Loda, uh, as I'm showing on the top left, Professor Anurag Agrawal, top right, uh, Dr. Mitali Mukherjee, top, bottom left, and Professor SKB, Samir K. Brahmachari, bottom right. I have been very fortunate to have mentors. And I think that is a very important component of an, of an entrepreneurial journey. To have role models who you can look up to in your early journey, who can inspire you that things are possible beyond the current discipline. And I'm fortunate to have those mentors and of course to have my family. 
So we built uh, artificial intelligence software that now uh, we are using in multiple situations. I'll be a little quick here. Uh, these software are openly available. I was at Stanford at that time when we built that, but, but with assistance from students from IIIT Delhi and uh, from Ames, we were able to build this transparent reasoning engines that we have, so to say, that, that can actually transparently tell us why should a certain decision be taken. If we, have to, if we have to implement a policy, let's say in the ICU or even in the, in the public health settings. I'll skip some of this. We did, we did this for uh, antibiotics and in the US settings, we did this for uh, health inequality, which is a very big problem in all the countries. There are marginal populations. And I was in the US at that time when this was done. And there is a lot of dis, uh, disparity in the US. It also exists in India, but, but we don't probably don't have all the, all, all the data systems at place in India, but there we had this data, we were clearly able to show that the income disparities, how they affect the health inequalities and what will mitigate those. Imagine something of this sort being done by you in the Indian settings where you put these data systems in place for health and you're able to apply science of data right, data science, to, to solve some of these big challenges in India. One of these, for example, is uh, availability of water of toil water in toilets is critical to prevent adverse pregnancy outcomes in India. Something that was shown by our models uh, in a transparent way. So in the end, I have arrived at, a, uh, at nearly at the end of my talk. I would, like, I would like to ask this question, who is an entrepreneur, right? And why would I call my journey an, an entrepreneurial journey? So one answer is that at IIIT Delhi, where I'm currently um, a faculty member, an assistant professor in computational biology and, uh, and Center for Artificial Intelligence. I also am the faculty in charge of entrepreneurship, where my job is to promote more entrepreneurial thinking in students, to create solutions which are novel, which are a little bit out of the world. But the traditional definition of an entrepreneur is one who organizes, manages, and assumes risks of a business or enterprise. That is a traditional Merriam-Webster definition of entrepreneurship. I would like to add another component here. The, entrepreneur, the, the enterprise that is mentioned here, right, does not always need to be only a money-making business. Something which is emerging now is called social entrepreneurship. An, enter an, an, an enterprise is something where you can take risk to imagine something new, to imagine a different form of system or a different shape of the world, right? That, that, that you can actually create a dent in. So, so we need not to be thinking about getting into jobs only but we may also start thinking about how do we create something new that can also be value and can create new jobs. So, so the traditional way has been, for example, businesses, right? Google or for example, what, what Elon Musk is doing, taking risks, very big risks and imagining a new future for the earth. I mean, that is one way, but you can also start thinking of imagining whatever fields you are interested in. It may be mathematics, it may be law, it may be engineering, it may be medicine, it may be anything. And then start thinking about how do you break some of those boundaries to create something new, take some of those risks, because when I did this, it wasn't without risks. I mean, imagine I came from a small town in Amritsar where I got my, uh, MBBS degree and nobody there uh, moved from being a doctor to being a researcher in, in mathematics or in computation. It was a huge risk, but I was driven. I, I found that very exciting, right? Let's do it and let's see what happens. I was fortunate to have mentors. I totally say that without mentors, it was not possible. Somebody has to then show you that it is possible and you are probably on the on, on an adventurous and the right path. But take risks, 
don't be afraid of what will happen happen in the jobs market maybe you can create some big markets yourself right so you can assume some of those risks and organize and manage them so with that um, i will end my talk because i think that was my entrepreneurial journey from uh, from from being a clinician from being a doctor to creating artificial intelligence solutions for doctors and then creating some of these solutions on the way i would also like to um, say something that has happened recently that at iit delhi where i am a faculty member we recently have approved a center for excellence in artificial intelligence for healthcare where we hope that we will inspire many new students younger generation to take up some of these uh, uh, solutions so that center is uh, supported by the government of delhi we are very fortunate to have uh, that center and that's how we hope to keep the traditional life there where artificial intelligence and healthcare at least will start coming together more and more and will create some solutions for the country thank you thank you dr city it has been a wonderful and fabulous lecture in fact i have been very very uh, technically myself were trying to understand a lot of things which you started with the first thing that the murmuring of the birds i have seen that video but never imagined that it can be related to health that was awesome please accept my congratulations because you have linked a common phenomena a natural phenomena with the phenomena of healthcare that has been amazing the second thing which i forgot to mention while introducing you is that you are also an assistant professor at triple iit delhi in fact you mentioned in your uh, session but i am so sorry i could not uh, your qualification such a huge list it's like a newspaper so i just missed out one uh, sentence from it so i repeat it he's assistant professor at triple iit delhi and also a kind of entrepreneur who is guiding creating a role models for the society so today he has been like a role model as he was mentioning that he had mentors who believed in him who shaped his destiny and is quite uh, fortunate to have mentors at that time in fact you will also be fortunate to have mentors if you seek the right guidance and because of this only we have brought role models like dr sethi who can be your mentors also and continuing with this dr sethi we will ask people to respond to questions and we have few questions ourselves so i would start with those questions first you mentioned about cross sectoral knowledge like you are typically a doctor if you say in the traditional model you have been a doctor first a mbbs then you transition to this artificial intelligence a doctor transitioning to mathematics and statistics and data so it's quite unusual that is a jump from one sector to another sector and maintaining your presence in both the sectors that is cross sectoral and really this is the future where where the healthcare of mankind lies i would like to ask you one simple what are the emerging areas of cross sectoral engagement like this which will be available to students and the audiences who are listening what are the areas one is healthcare and ai what are the other emerging areas in which our audience should concentrate and where lies the entrepreneurship the jobs the economy the innovation which are those areas dr sethi right so i think absolutely uh, so i think that is that is a very important question that to be aware of what are the next possible emerging areas that we uh, that we can look at one of the very strong cross sectoral uh, and what we see is that digital in any form is going to be the foundation of a lot of a lot of fields a lot of professions it can be digital health what do we mean by digital we mean that where basically we have some continuous record some continuous data for whatever we are working with so evidence based so for example evidence based law is is a very is something that has been in in existence for ever because law evidence is something that is uh, 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 the foundation stone of law but now in other fields as well evidence from data more and more for example initially we had uh, more expert uh, based uh, uh, guidelines more expert based Uh, uh, based professions, 
which I which I showed in the first uh, or second slide, that domain expertise that will continue. But along with that, data, digital, computing, right? So that is going to touch each and every person of the future. That is going to touch each and every. I mean, look at look at our the way our uh, uh, our our lives are shaped by digital. Um, I was surprised to learn that about 57% of people of India already use some form of digital health or other. It may be WhatsApp sharing of health uh, messages with our doctors, but I did not expect that kind of um, a number. So I think any profession, if you join it with data or if you join it with computing, you join it with software, you join it with mobile, right? So um, mobile uh, based something that is going to be because we are, we are glued to our mobiles all the time. So, so education, right? So think about education on our mobiles going further. Now COVID has made it a reality. There's so many things that are now have to take that digital future. So anything in your profession, I think if that can be combined with some form of digital solutions and in that typically engineering comes into play, but that is not always necessary because there is always, because when I started, I did not start with, with engineering. I started with understanding. So I started with those equations, which was more mathematics. So, but yeah, one thing leads to the next, when you develop some understanding, obviously you want to create solutions and that's where engineering comes in. So I would just suggest that find some of those things that you really think are you, you are passionate about and you want to solve and uh, you can get some guidance about and then combine some of those things together to, uh, to imagine. So as I said, those are something that, that can be chemistry, that can be physics, pick up anything. I mean, computing in physics, com micro, nano, small scale, right? Uh, now, now we are talking about quantum computing. But those are, those are very big leaps where, where things can actually be miniaturized. Uh, so I think all those areas are very important emerging areas. And anything that you can combine with biology, which is traditionally not studied in that way, is an emerging area. For example, imaging in biology is a big time. Thank you, Dr. Sethi. You have been very clinical in your answer. In fact, you have given us a lot of avenues where people can seek uh, next venture, the entrepreneurial venture or their job venture, those emerging areas. In fact, if anything is connected to data, as you said, especially with related to biology, that creates a big niche market for itself. So we have a one question, Dr. Sethi, and it's quite interesting. It says that, I will just uh, give it a little bit of uh, a kind of a background. If a crisis as big as this pandemic, a gargantuan crisis comes, there are two views to that. One view is that people lose their economy, they lose their lifestyle, they lose whatever has been the normal. The normal becomes absolutely unachievable. Another view is that crisis creates opportunities. Definitely those who see far can seek far also. So I just want to know, a student wants to know, what are the opportunities that this pandemic has created in the field of entrepreneurship or in the field of healthcare? Dr. Sethi. No, that's, I think you are absolutely right, um, uh, Shrikasam. So basically what we are seeing that COVID has, has brought a lot of problems, but also it has brought opportunities which we were blind to before. We thought that uh, those kind of things were never possible. So work from home, right? So kind of things that are now, I, I know that for example, in India where there is uh, places where we still have lack of access, we still have lack of uh, connectivity. So it is not always easy, but at least for areas where there is some connectivity, we have been able to, our eyes have been opened to a situation where we have been productive working from home. People have been productive working from home. People have been able to also maybe contribute even more in some cases, uh, focus on their families as well, 
uh, by working from home. So that is a kind of solution. Uh, if, for example, somebody can imagine uh, those kind of solutions that can make this much more easier, working from home, what will be saved? We will be polluting less. We will be traveling less. We will be spending time in the traffic less. We will be spending time less in useless uh, 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 going around or maybe sometimes even meetings. So everything can be done. For example, now we are discussing um, on Zoom calls. So if somebody can imagine some of these kind of new solutions where India can save some of resources, environment, by preventing some of unnecessary uh, traveling around. And our lab has been, for example, working all around uh, this time uh, during the COVID pandemic creating solutions and I think our students, etc., cetera, our, our uh, students and also the people have been very innovative in that. So that is one kind of opportunity, but also it has also opened our eyes to the gaps that exist in our system, not just the opportunities, the gaps that are there that we need be better health systems. We need better solutions that can actually advise industries, advise governments, with data about what do we need to put in place to deal with this kind of pandemic. So those kind of solutions, I mean, so solution providers are needed, those kind of data. I mean, if we can actually digitize, for example, if we can create a, uh, some sort of a digital spine across, for example, hospitals of Delhi, And you have these many beds, these many ICUs, these many ventilators. Imagine that kind of a software solution, which can actually save many lives. So that is another form. Then in effective education, we, we see that education has to go online. That is another opportunity. We need more drugs to be discovered. We need more vaccines to be discovered. We want people to really connect to each other where a research lab can connect with uh, with, a, with a totally different kind of a, uh, a solution provider, such as a manufacturing lab, right? So all those kind of things are opportunities and many people have been leveraging these opportunities to, to actually advance their careers. Well, Dr. Sethi, that is quite a beautiful answer. In fact, uh, the opportunities for day-to-day -day life is quite there. In fact, if you can find solutions to our small, small problems that can create a huge market for economy. In fact, this opportunity exists. And as you said, there's a gap also in that gap. Also, if we can plug those gaps, there is still a huge market for plugging those gaps. So right. there are two types of prospects coming for everybody. One is the existing gap, which we have to fill, which our pandemic has showed and a gaping hole is there. And the second is the innovation, the innovative thinkings that can create new opportunities. Like you said that 10 days before the CDC announced the regulations, one person has actually showed to the world that things are coming in a big way. And let me tell you, Dr. Sethi, see the signs of weather. Earlier, 100 years back, a lot of people used to die because of this calamity of typhoons and hurricanes and storms. Right. But now we don't hear about such because our predictive analysis of weather has become almost better than what it was 50 years ago. So what I feel that in healthcare also, if that same level of predictive analysis is built, analytics is built, the model is built, there's so many pandemics and so many lives we can save in the field of healthcare. That is a big market itself. Suddenly it struck me. Now the next question is Dr. Sethi, one is asking, one of our audience is asking, is it necessary for to be a doctor or an engineer or a professional to enter this artificial intelligence and data analytics market or he is not an accomplished bachelor in a, a profession like medicine or engineering can a non-engineering non-medical people also enter this sector and carve out a niche for themselves what is your opinion dr Seth? so my opinion is that um... One can, one can definitely develop interest. One can definitely dabble with things, learn things, take some courses. That is, that is obviously very helpful. But, but I think there is also some value to some structured training. And that doesn't need to happen uh, 
in a classroom. That can happen totally online. I mean, there are micro masters, for example, these days being offered by online uh, universities, like even like MIT. So what I feel is that some level of rigorous training will prepare you uh, for 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 the challenges or the skills that will be needed going forward. So I, I hesitate from saying because I actually, when I started out, I did not have that training, right? In mathematics, I did not have that training in computing. So I totally understand your question. But when I entered my PhD, I took about a couple of years to get a rigorous training in statistics, to get a rigorous training in programming. And that was foundation. I mean, so without that, it would have been very difficult. So I would say that some level of structured training uh, through a mentored program is helpful. I mean, degrees are degrees. Their degrees are just um, uh, evidence that, uh, uh, that you put some sincerity into work and that was rewarded. So I would like to say that um, whatever it be in AI, ML, data science, I don't say that medicine is important. I mean, you don't need to really uh, train in medicine if you have already done your engineering uh, to go back. If you want to do that, people, many people do that. They, in, for example, in, uh, in societies like US, people go back to medical school after doing their law or engineering. In India, it is very uh, uncommon. But I don't say that it is impossible or, or it is even uh, uh, important to do that. But but to get a structured training in, in the field that you want to do, I mean, there's one field that you are already getting trained in. And then getting some structured training in, in the other area where you want to create, create, a, create an impact, right? So that is somewhat necessary for, for um, I mean, I'm still learning. I still learn every day. When I'm teaching, I'm also learning. So, so or, in our research, we are still learning every day new things, what is coming up. We have to be on our toes. So I think that there is value to, to a structured learning program. So I would definitely recommend that, don't think of it as degrees, but think of it as continuous learning experience that will be necessary. Yes, Dr. Seti, I also agree that there has to be some sort of structured learning and training. Otherwise, this science, which is quite precise and quite rigorous, that kind of uh, mindset does not come if you have, don't have a structure. And the understanding also becomes difficult. The way you are showing the graphs and from the Lancet and from other MIT publications, to understand that also, you need to have a training. It's not like that you are reading some article from a newspaper or from a magazine or from a casual sports magazine. It's a kind of a serious business. Even an article gets a peer review. It takes months, even year to get your article published in Lancet. And may you, um, when you mention, in fact, audience, I would like to say that Lancet is one of the most prestigious organization in healthcare and getting a published version in Lancet magazine itself a recognition of your talent. So structured training audiences you should have. Do not feel that only casual education will run through you to the next level in this structured science. You need to have a structured learning. Now, continuing with this question, Dr. Seti, I would like to ask an engineering student, a medical student, and I'm looking non these two students, what kind of courses should they do from before to enter this analytics of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Like you must be seeing that code from the school. There's a new movement in right. all over the world coding for the school children, though they are not a specialist. So can you suggest some courses for our audience that they should do before entering this arena? Dr. Seti. Absolutely. I think you already said it. So um, I think uh, start coding early from as, as early as possible. Uh, because it will it will make you creative. So um, I remember reading some interviews from uh, from some people in in Silicon when I was at Stanford from Silicon Valley that uh, basically they start coding from very early on, maybe in their uh, second or third standard. I'm not saying that we should be. Um, I mean, it's it's not necessary that we do that, um, but I think. Uh, Coding is one form, 
which make give gives which gives you creative power right and with very little investment uh, you can create some things with coding um, you can start writing your software you can start writing your analysis um, and everything is available on internet for uh, uh, on a lot of things to learn from so it requires little investment that is something that coding from early on is going to make uh, a very powerful impact on uh, on whatever you uh, embark on doing next you may or may not learn analysis because analysis is not the only thing many people just build things by coding good apps by coding just good designs right so by coding apps that will connect with people uh, and analysis can come later and somebody else can help you with analysis but creating something in the digital world it which which means coding which means coding for websites coding for mobile apps uh, building uh, uh, solutions which can be useful for people um, and then of course analysis and data that that is very niche and that is also important so i would definitely say courses that help you in coding computing um, data um, software that will be very helpful for uh, uh, for your careers ha uh, dr sethi fine in fact uh, i would add a little bit what you have already said for the audience that uh, you have to start from the beginning like in the us people have started coding and even in india during this pandemic a lot of people are pressing for coding right from the young age so some of our audience would like to ask from a experienced person like you what are the courses in name of the courses like from udemy or from uh, coursera or there are so many other platforms what are the basic courses a person should do to keep himself ready as a parallel to what is actually doing suppose he is uh, learning engineering in the fourth year he wants to have some time to do something for future to do some course can you suggest some courses for those kind of students sure. to prepare for being a data scientist right right i mean so there are many data scientist uh... uh courses available as well for example mit uh, has a as i said micro masters program that's a paid one but uh, still it's a, uh it's available online uh, in in data in data science and statistics that is offered by mit a similar uh, uh, that's a micro masters which is which requires some level of commitment uh, uh, i think 10 to 12 hours per week and um, uh, and also you get credits that can be counted towards your next degree program so if you're looking for that that's an uh, that's uh, that's an interesting place to look at similarly i think there's another micro masters program that is offered by uh, another prestigious university i think it's arvana shetra and champaign or um, um, uh, some some similar place uh, which also offers data science both of these are at, uh, by edx Uh, there is one industry course as well which is by offered by ibm in data science which is a certificate program it is not a micro masters it is a certificate program in data science uh, that is also uh, useful it is less um, uh, taxing you have to spend a lesser amount of time uh, lesser amount of credits as well and it's a certification course not a uh, degree course then on coursera there are many courses in data science for uh public health for example i know there are courses offered by johns hopkins university there are courses on coursera that that are uh, that are uh, um offered by stanford university uh on data science there are courses that, that are like introduction to python programming on coursera which just introduce you to programming then there are very specialized courses which are focusing just on for example specialized uh ai method such as uh, uh deep learning there's a course um, um offered by stanford university i think uh, um on um, on deep learning there's a course offered on probabilistic pro uh, probabilistic graphical models uh, that was very early on offered by uh, daphne coller from stanford so uh, so i think all these are uh, you can get a very wide range of general to 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 very specific courses uh, 
um, that you can take. Uh, and many of these are actually freely available on Coursera, for example, there are many freely available programs. And in many, you can actually apply for, uh, for scholarship. So you, you can get actually waivers and even the paid programs, you can get scholarship and, and can, can get the best of education out there. Dr. Sethi, that is a tremendous answer. In fact, I have been noting down and uh, where are these courses available? And I would like to ask you just as a writer, is these courses available in your university also? What are the ways in which entering your university? You said now in US, there's a system in which a person after doing engineering, he may go to the medicine also. Go through the five years of medicine or a physician may go to learn history. There's a cross sectoral engagement in the education. So if somebody wants to join your triple IIT, what are the ways when the application comes and how do they apply? What are the qualifications required? Some light on that, Dr. Sethi. Right. So the first question, and when you said uh, courses, I think we recently started a postgraduate diploma pro uh, program in data science and artificial intelligence. So that is for mostly for working professionals. So people who are busy with their jobs and now want to level up um, in their uh, training, uh, but don't have the time to go back to university. As I said, uh, in the US, people do go back to school, people go back to, but, but it's not always possible in India. So faculty colleagues of mine, I'm also teaching in that um, it will be starting in the next semester. So there is that, and that is again with, in partnership with IBM. And that's an online program, which is a postgraduate diploma program in data science and AI. That is very specific to, uh, to online education for people who are busy in their jobs and want to skill up. For the more regular um, streams, when do people apply? It is a very uh, standard way of application. The similar way in which students apply to uh, to, to all the colleges of the Delhi government. So we come under the Delhi government colleges. We are a, a Delhi state union. So we are affiliated with the Delhi state. state. So we are a Delhi state institution university. So all the colleges, for example, DD, D, uh, DTU, NSUT, and um, uh, IGT, UW. So all those colleges which, uh, which, which take applications from students, uh, for, so we are in that pool uh, of applications where students apply and then we select and then there's obviously there's some criteria to, uh, uh, for student selection. But I think your question is very important because going forward that cross-disciplinary training, we have been thinking about it in the new center that we have uh, uh, just received uh, approval for at least we plan to definitely try to think about how to engage totally cross-disciplinary uh, engagement. For example, can really a student from Ames who is doing their graduation can take some data science courses at Triple Delhi. One of the thing, things that we are already doing, we have already opened up some of our courses. Next semester, I and my colleague, uh, Professor Ponurangam Kumar, we will be teaching a course called Computing for Medicine. And we have opened it up to, to people, for example, uh, from Ames or any other medical uh, college to take that course, to get an exposure to, to what is computing in computing for medicine all about. But going forward, we plan to have some structured programs, which I think will need a lot more education uh, reform of sorts. I don't want to um, uh, say that only we can create that, we can only give some examples, but creating some diploma programs, certificate programs in data science for healthcare is probably will be the starting point. Dr. Sethi, very lengthy discussion. In fact, we have touched upon every aspect of the future of data science, the healthcare industry and the economy and the prospects lying ahead. One final question which has come to us and which I also want to ask you because you are experienced data scientist. In fact, you have mentioned that you have worked on this uh, pandemic also and the data you have collected before the pandemic also, and you must be busy in collecting data also during this because it's a phase in which data scientists want to understand everything. My simple question is that where did we go wrong? 
the data science was already there. Some development was also already there. It's not that we are facing it for the first time. Some kind of predictive analysis capability was always available to the best of the institutes. What do you think, where did we go wrong? Two, three points. And second, how can we plug those loopholes that we don't face another failure in predictions? Dr. Sid. So I think uh, the entire world was taken by by the scale of this pandemic. So, uh, so I think we, somewhere we probably miss, it was just as all pandemics are, they are fast and, uh, and the scale is huge. So I think one place where we probably went wrong, we have been thinking about it for a long time, that digital medicine, digital health, uh, data, I think we've been speaking about that, discussing about that for uh, for maybe seven to eight years since, uh, maybe even more when big data and analytics came into, into play. But we were never really convinced that this can actually come become import, important uh, to a scale uh, where, uh, uh, where we would need. And the unfortunate part is that systems cannot be created during a pandemic because during a pandemic we have to save lives during a pandemic we have to do whatever firefighting we have to do so there are good opportunities i mean there are good there are good opportunities to to place some of these but we have to be prepared so i think the place where we went wrong was and this is true for all of the world that we were never prepared for um, for this kind and scale of uh, problem with data and predictive analytics for health. We always thought that uh, AI and data and health, they are very futuristic. They are maybe 10 years down the line. We never thought that it may happen one month down the line. That is where I think, um, and secondly, I think um, there are always in, in hindsight is 2020. In hindsight, there are always places where we could have done better, um, having better data collection systems or having better data reporting systems, um, data. I think all those things I, um, I think are universal. That is true for everywhere. Uh, but, but having systems put in place um, when we are not in the firefighting mode. I mean, we cannot prepare, we cannot put systems in place when we are in a war. So the systems have to be played, put in place before anticipating um, how that a war-like situation may arise. I think that is something that we can be better prepared for going forward. Dr. Sethi, we have been thinking that we'll close the session, but the fact is that questions keep coming. Your session has been so productive and so key engaging that I also have one or two questions just to ask an expert, but I will keep it afterward. But one question from an audience question takes precedence over me. He's asking, what mindset does it take to become a data scientist? Can anybody become a data scientist? Or does a specific mindset is required to become a data scientist? What are those qualities? And how can we develop those qualities? Two questions in a one question. Right. <clears throat> so as I, as I said, so essentially, um, again, going back to a traditional Venn diagram that is shown about data scientists, deep domain expertise. I mean, data scientists need to have deep domain expertise. So at least in some of the questions that you are addressing, you may not know all of medicine, but if you are a, if you are a healthcare professional, you need to have a deep domain uh, expertise. So not just having statistical expertise. So second is statistical and machine learning expertise, right? And, uh, uh, and third is a hacking mindset. Hacking is a very uh, a word which is which is uh, totally I think uh, uh, considered in a very bad light. But if you go back to the original meaning of hacking, hacking means to continuously innovate solutions, right? So the first necessary necessity is uh, deep domain expertise. Second necessity is to have deep uh, expertise in analytics, uh, such as statistics or machine learning. Third is having a hacking mindset, right? I have actually a book which says uh, 
um, um, Bayesian analysis for hackers. And when people say that, people ask me, are you a hacker? So all doctors are hackers. We hack bodies, right? We, we put bodies back into place um, by tinkering with that. And, and doctors learn uh, to place uh, bodies back into shape by tinkering. So a hacking mindset means a tinkering mindset. It does not mean that we have to do, do bad with hacking, right? So a tinkering mindset, an innovative mindset of creating solutions, I think if you put these three things together, that is a traditional uh, uh, requisite of a data set, uh, of a data scientist mindset. Brilliant. Audience, please note that three things Dr. Seti has said, and in fact, I concur fully with him. One is a tinkering mindset, second is an innovative mindset, and third is a solution-based mindset. You have all this tinkering and this mindset of innovation, but you don't offer solutions, so people will not be interested. So these three qualities, if you have, you can definitely become a data scientist. Nobody can stop you, and it's a beautiful answer. In fact, I was not also expecting that these three qualities are re required. I thought that a lot of domain knowledge and this boring aspect of numbers and statisticians, actually people don't take it otherwise, Dr. Sethi, but people regard it as a very dry science. But it's actually interesting science if you relate it to solutions. Not to theory. So we come to the last question, which is my question. And after this, we'll take your parting message to all our viewers. My question is very simple. So many data we are talking about, billions and billions of data. In fact, you mentioned that you have two lakhs uh, surveys and you have the data that must run into thousands of bits and bytes. I am asking you, where is the data regulation? Is the government coming out with a data regulation? And what do you expect? as a data scientist to be incorporated. The European Union already passed the GDPR and the data regulation, everybody. Are we also searching for our such huge regulations to regulate this massive inflow of data, especially of privacy concerns in healthcare? Absolutely, I think that's a big question. Uh, I'm aware that there is this data, patient data protection bill, which is uh, currently under consideration, the PDPA. Uh, uh, bill or uh, right now I don't know uh, on the, the stage but I think yeah so you are right we have to devise our own data regulations which are meant for the economy of India and the future economy of India uh, because I think health as an enterprise has a very different shape in US and Europe so the HIPAA uh, laws in US about patient uh, protection in the US and the GDPR laws in the in the Europe, they are very good. Um, they are very good uh, 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 guidelines. But also, we also we we need to think about what India needs to uh, uh, to develop uh, in those data regulations so that our populations also benefit the most because there are always challenges. Um, and some in, in the in the in the light of some of these in the in the in the back of some of these laws, sometimes there is also things that uh, creep in that are not necessarily good for the entire healthcare system. So there is always this, uh, scope for uh, developing our own regulations, and I think it is an evolving um, a discussion. I don't have a short answer to that. The only answer to that I have is that there are discussions that are happening more and more, more people's opinions need to be uh, taken into that more and more domains should be taken into that discussion from for example not just data scientists and not just clinicians also uh, businesses and how can they uh, create new business models for india where people are actually benefiting from the solutions more as well uh, than, than the traditional models so those are discussions that are currently under progress I hope they will be in place in the next, uh, at least before the major data revolution <clears throat> kicks off, the regulations are also uh, should be in place. Currently they are under development, but I don't know uh, when will we see them uh, implemented. Fine, Dr. Seti. Definitely the discussions are on and definitely we will have a very robust data regulation act so that we can uh, control the massive inflow of 
data and the outflow of data. Right. And it should create a local economy for India rather than benefiting anybody else. It should benefit our local population first. I fully agree with you. In fact, Dr. Sethi, I'm so sorry. The questions are coming. In fact, if you don't mind, can I ask you one question from our audience? I don't want to disappoint them. Oh, no, the last question oh, is always the pressing question. So that question is a very simple one, but the audience also wants to know your mind. What are the problems of a beginner data scientist faces and what those problems, if not resolved, they leave that. What are those fields, what are those initial beginner data scientist problems, which I may face if I become a data scientist? I think uh, mathematics is something which most of us are pretty, uh, pretty scared of. Uh, I used to be scared of mathematics in my school, but when basically I started uh, uh, preparation for, um, for, for medical school, I developed a love for physics. And physics is a lot of mathematics, right? And when we went to, when I went to medical school, uh, I realized that a lot of our bodies actually behaving on those physical principles. So mathematics came back into my life. So I think, don't be scared of mathematics because data science is a lot of mathematics. And, uh, and as you said uh, uh, that many people find it to be dry. Many people don't even see what is the use of the mathematics that they are, um, that they are learning in schools or colleges. So I, I would say that that is one of the biggest hindrances uh, to many students, uh, that fear of mathematics. Uh, maybe one of those hindrances because programming is easy to learn. It is logic, right? It's like putting blocks together. And, but mathematics is something that is also logic, but somehow gets uh, uh, the way we write equations, the way we make it totally non-intuitive. We don't visualize it. We don't give analogies. It becomes a very dry science for us. So don't be afraid of it. Try to find the deeper meaning and the deeper analogies and the deeper, because there are people out there who are actually doing that, giving you deeper uh, understandings of mathematics from an intuition standpoint. So don't be scared of mathematics, but at some point of time, you will require some rigor. And that's why I said some rigor in training will be required. And I think that is the biggest, uh, 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 I would say, uh, block in most of the data scientists uh, way that uh, many times we are scared of mathematics. I don't see other things are really blocks. Uh, other things are really easy things to cross. I mean, learning programming, developing a domain expertise, you are developing a domain expertise, that's why you are in that domain. So I think it's only the, uh, uh, and an innovative mindset is I think you will develop um, through mentorship. Dr. Sethi, in fact, you have caught the devil by its horn only. Mathematics, in a lighter sense, is the devil. In fact, from the very beginning, the way we write equations and the way it is represented on the blackboard, that has a psychological effect on our mindset. So the mathematics is the thing in which most of us believe to be a bigger ghost than the ghost itself. Most of us have been hearing mathematics from the very beginning. But on a serious level, I will tell you, if you have a passion, like Dr. Seti said, and you are a solution bind, bounded person, and you have a solution for the society, and you are passionate about creating something for the social uh, sector, then definitely you will find this science just like a path. It's not the end in itself, but it's a medium through which you can find solutions. For that, I'd like to thank you for such an excellent observations on the entire aspect of artificial intelligence, data science, machine learning, deep learning, quantum computing you mentioned, and then you mentioned about how it can be uh, created towards solution, the Indian economy, the data. In fact, we have covered everything that could have been covered in such a lecture. We have been blessed. In fact, such a beautiful lecture. Time and again, we should play this and see what we have missed. And I would like the audience to watch it on YouTube when we upload it because, and those who have not watched it, kindly tell them to watch because you must be missing something for the future. What Dr. Sethi is saying is not about the present only. He's predicting the future. He has also told where we have gone uh, bust while predicting this pandemic and where we should plug our loophole. So a lot of things has been discussed today. I request Dr. Sethi to act accept our solemn congratulations for 
getting ki so ki humble to address the audiences and they have benefited immensely i'm telling you these are the people who like to see role models like you they also want to become like you so i've inspired so many people for future to come 